Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the new series. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss why Egypt was invited as the chief guest at the Republic Day Parade. What is the rationale behind it? And how does one know that which countries are to be invited as chief guests? What is the entire protocol behind it? We will discuss that as well. Of course, we are going to discuss in detail the relationship that exists between India and Egypt as well as what is the future and the challenges of it. So without any further ado, let us move ahead and look at these topics. First of all, we are going to discuss the president of Egypt who is Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Why is being India's Republic Day chief guest an honor, highest of the honors in India when it comes to diplomatic relations? Military parades, what is the colonial past behind it? What happens after the MEA has zeroed in on its options regarding the chief guest of honor and what are the relationship, what is the relationship between India and Egypt and other important facets as well as the challenges. C. CC's visit as Republic Day chief guest India's Egypt opportunity. What is the Egypt opportunity for India? And first of all, we are going to discuss the president of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. He was before becoming a president of the before becoming the president of Egypt in 2014. He was country's military chief and defense minister. He succeeded the democratically elected MD Morse after a coup in 2013, and after that he won the national election in 2014 on an economic development plank. Although in the current times his government is getting mixed reactions specifically with respect to the current economic situation of Egypt. Moving ahead, now if we have to talk about why is being India's Republic Day Parade's chief guest of honor, such kind of honor, we have to look at this. Now understand, in diplomatic arena, if one country has been invited as the chief guest at the Republic Day Parade, it is the highest honor a country accords in terms of protocol. And they are given the ceremonial guard of honor at Rashtrapati Bhavan, another honor. Now, it is followed by a reception which is hosted by the President of India in the evening. And they also lay a wreath at Rajghat to show a tribute. This is kind of a tribute. This is a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. There is a banquet in their honor, a lunch hosted by the Prime Minister and calls by the Vice President and External Affairs Minister. Also. The visit of the chief guest is full of symbolism. Whenever a country has been invited as the chief guest at the Republic Day Parade, it is kind of a symbolism showing that this country is India's, from the India's and Indian perspective, this country is India's important friend. Another, another important point over here is that once that happens, it shows that India is interested in furthering the prospects with that country. So it is a kind of a very powerful tool in terms of that only. And it is a high diplomatic symbol for the country and that has been invited, that has been invited. And of course, for India as well. Now in 2022 only, India and Egypt, they completed 75 years of their diplomatic relation, official diplomatic relations. Now, we also have to understand that how is it you know the what is the protocol that is followed the process that it is followed when we talk about the inviting of such nations the process basically starts nearly six months ahead of the republic day and all kinds of considerations are taken into account by the ministry of external affairs before they shortlist the options and shortlist those to whom we are going to extend invitation also the most important factor that is going to dictate such considerations is the nature of relationship between India and whatever the country is concerned. What is the amicability of it? What are the areas in which India can participate in that country? What is the stand of that country with respect to India in many bilateral terms and many other things? Also, invitation to be the chief guest of Republic Day Parade is the ultimate sign of friendship between India and the country that has been invited. And specifically, if we are going to discuss uh, this very important term, then keep in mind, India has invited 
mostly those countries of course other countries are there but the non-aligned movement which started in the 1950s and 60s in order to keep the freshly decolonized countries away from the cold war this non-aligned movement was launched by india indonesia egypt and etc we'll discuss that as well so this also has a lot to do when it comes to inviting a nation in the at the republic day parade now if we talk about the military parades military parades are a very important facet of the republic day it is basically a show of the weaponry prowess of india and mesopotamian civilization has mentioned marching soldiers so it goes back to mesopotamian civilization as well it is basically a grand show that uh, that an organized marching contingent of soldiers displayed back then and similarly for us it is right now now the fashion or we can say the practice of marches such as these it all started with rising nationalism in europe in the 19th century and they became a symbol of unification in which we could capture the collective frenzy of the people collective imagination of the people to show that we are one in nature for india it is also the same the prussian army which is prussia which consisted largely of the monarchy of modern day germany is said to have been the pioneer of modern military parades so remember that for india it's a historical or a colonial relic during the british raj royal parades and processions were commonplace and a military parade marked india's first public day in 1950 where it was held it was held in irwin amphitheater which is the major dhyanchand stadium in the current times the ceremony included the official swearing in of dr rajendra prasad who was the first president of india and a marching it was written in a book by uh, ramesh guha that a marching contingent of over 3000 men with the artillery firing 21 gun salute and liberator planes of the indian air force flying overhead now after that this was shifted to rajpath now kartavya path and step by step the colonial relics were you know they were getting discarded away by different symbolism not only military day parades but the iconic tableau also became an integral part of the event in which every state is required to send its um, symbolic tableau so that diversity in unity or unity in diversity can be maintained and can be shown for the first time ever in 1950 india invited as chief guest at the republic day president sukarno of indonesia president sukarno other than nasser of egypt nkrumah of ghana tito of yugoslavia nehru that is jawaharlal nehru of india they collectively started the non aligned movement and cc uh, the current guest of honor chief guest i wouldn't say guest of honor chief guest at the republic day cc is the fifth leader from the region of west asia and north africa to be the republic day chief guest other than him algeria's president abdel aziz bouteflika in 2001 was invited iran's president mohammad khatami was invited in 2003 king abdullah bin abdul break king abdullah bin abdul aziz al saud of saudi arabia in 2006 and the crown prince who is now the president under the rule of uae mohammad bin zaid al nehan was also has also been invited and if we talk about how the ministry of external affairs zeroes in on options because it is not necessary that whom we are thinking about is going to definitely attend the parade why because every person every leader of the world is the very much involved in different engagements so it is not necessary that we are going to definitely get the person we want as the chief guest so what will happen a ministry of external affairs prepares a list and then it seeks the approval of the prime minister and the president on the matter after that when one uh, you know um, approval has been given then the um, embassy at whatever country's president or prime minister we want they discreetly ascertain the availability of the potential chief guest and after a candidate is finalized more official communication takes place between india and the country of the invitee all right and then the chief of protocol it work he works or she works on the details of the program and logistics and a detailed program for the trip at the republic day ceremonies and the republic day ceremony ceremonies is also shared by the 
protocol chief to his counterpart from the visiting nation. And if we have to talk about the guests we had in the last 10 years, in 2013, we have King Jigme Khaseb Namgyel Wangchuk of Bhutan. In 2014, we had Japan's Shinzo Abe. Then in 2015, we had the President of the United States, Barack Obama. In 2016, we had France's President, Francois Hollande. In 2017, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Said Al Nahyan of UAE. And in 2018, 10 chief guests were there. These all were the heads of the ASEAN states. Okay. Moving ahead, if we talk about 2019, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa was invited. In 2020, President Jair Bolsonaro. And in 2023, of course, we have Egypt's president. Now we have to talk about the significance of Egypt. See. 12% of the world's trade, it passes through the Swiss Canal. And Egypt is the gateway not only to Africa, but also to other parts. Now we have to understand that India, Indian community is present over here. Indian, more than 50 Indian companies have, have invested in Egypt. India is very, uh, Egypt is very significant for India. All right. So let's talk about the relationship that we have. Now in the current meeting, India has decided to upgrade the partnership with Egypt to strategic partnership and it will broadly have four elements. These elements include political defense and security, economic engagement, scientific and academic collaboration, cultural and people to people contacts as well. We have a thriving Indian community over there. So if we talk about the ancient times in which India had relations with in, uh, Egypt, now we can go back to Emperor Asoka's time. So we had relations with Egypt since then. Now Mahatma Gandhi, an Egyptian revolutionary, is Saad Zakhlul, shared common ideals, ideology when it comes to independence from the British colonial rule. A joint announcement of establishment of diplomatic relations at the ambassadorial level happened three days after Indian, eh, India became free. So after three days of independence, we established our diplomatic relations. Now Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru was a close friend of President Gamal Abdel Nasser. A friendship treaty was also signed between India and Egypt in 1955. In the modern times, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, P.V. Narsimha Rao, I.K. Gujral, Dr. Manmohan Singh, they have visited, in, uh, visited Egypt in these years respectively. Egypt's President Hosni Mubarak came to India in 1982, 83 and 2008. And after 2011 revolution, President Morsi visited India in March 2013. Now, post-2014 and 2014, the external affairs minister paid a visit to Cairo in August 2015 after Sisi became the president. Prime Minister Modi met the president of Egypt, Sisi, on the sidelines of UNGA, New York, in September 2015. These are the certain engagements. Everything is not necessary. Two to three points you can write. President Sisi also paid a state visit to India in September 2016 when a joint statement was issued in which three pillars of relationship were emphasized upon political security cooperation, economic engagement and scientific collaboration and cultural and people to people ties. The most significant visit happened in 2021. It has been of the Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal V. R. Choudhury and in July 2022, Air Marshal Helmi led a delegation to India. So, he, he, in order to boost the defense cooperation, this all happened. Now, if we talk about the COVID period relations, it also thrived in the sense that, um, first of all, our Prime Minister and the President, CC, they had at length phone calls about the situation and how to control the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Egypt dispatched three planes with medical supplies to India on 9th May 2021. This was during the second wave. In addition, Embassy of India also signed an agreement to procure 300,000 doses of remdesivir from um, this pharma of Egypt. Then economic relations, we have to understand that India by in India Egypt bilateral trade agreement has been in operation since March 1978. And it is based on most favored nation clause. You have to tell me in the comment segment what is this, very importantly. Bilateral trade increased more than five times in the last 10 years. Volume of trade decreased marginally during COVID period, uh, the COVID period to US $4.5 billion in 1920 and $4.15 billion in 2020-21. Defense cooperation are also very nice, specifically when it comes to air forces. We also had a joint development with respect to 
fighter aircraft in the 1960s. Even IAF, Indian Air Force pilots have trained, in, uh, trained the Egyptian pilot from 1960s until 1984. The landmark event of the year was in 2022 was the official visit of our Defence Minister Sri Rajnath Singh to Cairo and an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding on Defence Cooperation was also signed in the same year. Now, if we talk about what does India want, India wants to ensure that we are exporting indigenous LAC Tejas, missiles like Akash, DRDO's smart anti-airfield weapon and radars to Egypt. So, this was also there. Cultural relations also are like this. The Maulana Azad Center for Indian Culture, it has been promoting cultural cooperation between the two countries through languages such as Hindi, Urdu and yoga classes, among other soft cultural programs. It also organizes India Days in Egyptian governorates, where you know where it is done on uh, in the universities, and this is done on a regular basis to ensure that people know about the country India. It has been organizing glimpses of India, which is a painting competition in in which many children participate. December in early December 2021, an eleven member cultural troupe, Anvesha Society for Performing Arts, also visited India. It performed at Ismailia Port Said and India Bangladesh Maitri Divas celebration uh, at Barrow Place in Cairo and also Alexandria. Indian community is thriving because we have around 3,200 uh, Indians living there, most of whom are, in, in, you know, in, they are concentrated in the capital Cairo. About 400 Indian students are studying in Egypt, mainly in the Al Azhar University. There we have 275 students. And at N. Shams Medical University and Cairo University. On terrorism, India and Egypt, Egypt specifically, has said that it has taken a tough stance over Islamic religious extremism, saying that the perspective with India is shared by the Egypt and it will work with India in curbing terrorism because it is a threat not only to India but also to the world and Egypt. There are certain challenges. See, Right now, Egypt is going through a through an economic crisis. First of all, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the tourism, it collapsed. Other than that, due to the Russia-Ukraine war, Egypt dependent 80% on these two countries when it comes to wheat. So, it imported wheat from these two countries. Now, what happens? That because of the blockages and other sanctions, it could not procure wheat. So, it has also hit its foreign exchange reserve because it is not earning much. It is important from different other countries and it is not in its interest. Despite the ban, that uh, despite there were quotas that wheat won't be exported to other countries, India last year allowed shipment of 61,500 metric tons of wheat to Egypt. More is needed. Inflation is at a five-year high of 21%, double-digit inflation. From India, Egypt has sought investment in infrastructure, specifically metro projects in Cairo and Alexandria, Swiss Canal Economic Zone, second channel of the Swiss Canal, and new administrative capital in the Cairo suburb as well. But there are certain challenges. See, more than 50 Indian companies have already invested there, but China is the problem over here. China's bilateral trade with Egypt is currently at $15 billion, which is double what India has done in 2021-22, that is $7.26 billion. And if for wooing China, CC has visited China at least seven times in the last eight years. Egypt is the most populous country in West Asia. That is why it is important to capture the market and China is doing that. It occupies a crucial geostrategic location. 12% of the global trade passes through the Swiss Canal and it is a key player in the region. That is why it is important for India to do more about it. Now, if we ha have to take the names of those students who have answered my last question correctly, please stay with me. So, the last question's answer would be option A, Smeem and Vaishnavi, Aarti, also Aarti has answered another question, very good. Aryansh, Musketeer, Subhash, Archana, uh, then Manish, Dev, Shivangi, Puneet, Pallavi, Rishabh, Danesh, Akhil, Vignesh, Chandan, Nitin, Trangi, Suchita, Rupal. Also, motivational person has answered the myths question. Very good. Then Srinivas, very good. Then uh, also Alka, very good. Then Nagesh, Daksha, very good. 
then Manish Acharya, nice, good. Then Pallavi has answered it correctly. Anuj, Dharani, Anita, Sagarika, Soumya, Madhumita, God's Love, Tushita, also Aryansh, Suraj and Bhargavi. Thank you for answering the last question. Answer the current question as well. I will take your names in the next segment. Thank you so much for watching.